I'm excited to introduce Matt Willis. Hi, hi, how are you? I do take this job quite seriously, you know. It's, uh, you know, it's um, you know, it's uh, it's the most important job I've ever been given. How have you managed to to stay in a place where you, where your well being and your your family's well being is good? Um, well, I mean, at times we haven't, you know. I think um, that's the that's the thing, isn't it? In my eldest two, you know, I really felt like they needed to go back to school. They really needed it. And it wasn't from a selfish place for me from not wanting to homeschool anymore because, my God, I didn't want to homeschool anymore. When you can grab a moment, I think it's so important and to, to kind of open up. And, and also, by me saying, you know, things are hard or struggling, you know, I think is kind of a give someone else permission to, to, to talk about the way they feel. You're going to make me mate. cry and oh. I've got to go and do a Radio 1 interview. So. <laughs>
Uh, no, it's quite hard to adapt. <laughs> um, I, I, I found it. Um, the thing is, I, I didn't. I don't really think about things too much before I do them, which is pro- probably a downside to my personality. <laughs> I just go. It's either a hell yeah or a no to me. Mm. You know. So um, those are the kind of two things I think. I the way I weigh a, com- um, a decision up. You know. And it was. Um, and it was like, yeah, I want to stay at home with this baby who I find the most amazing thing I've ever seen in my life. You know, like um. I want to stay at home with this every day, you know. So um, I was like, cool. And and at the at that time in my life, I could, and I was um at a time in my kind of career where it was possible to do that. So I'm so I did it, and um, I only about six weeks later did it kind of hit me, you know. I was like, oh, this isn't quite, <laughs> this isn't quite the sunshine and rainbows that I thought it was going to be, you know. But it was um, you know. But then it's like everything, you know, like um, you know nothing lasts right so whatever if it's good it doesn't last if it's bad it doesn't last you know so it's like it's um it swings and roundabouts isn't it and so when times were getting a bit hard and stressful you know suddenly it was like amazing again and then you know so it's kind of always up and down it's it's one of the things that um you don't expect when you're a father to change as quickly and as much as it is like the landscape or the horizon of being a, a parent literally change changes sometimes on a daily basis sometimes on a weekly basis from you know from waking up um in the middle of the night to sleeping through to you know all the different changes to eating to weaning and all the different things it's changing constantly yeah 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 it's so bizarre like I remember um um I thought back to it someone said the word colic to me the other day and I hadn't heard (laughs) that word for such a long time and I remember that being such a big part of my life for like, for like, you know, six, eight weeks, you know, like being such a big deal. I was like, oh my God, when is this colic thing going to end? <laughs> you know, and like, then it ends and you don't think about it for 10 years, you know, but like, um, you know, so it's, um, you know, like I was given that advice by someone um, who was a father and they gave me the advice, whatever it is, it won't last. You know, so if it's good, it won't last. If it's bad, it won't last. And it was the, yeah. it was so, and I was so pleased about advice because sometimes I'd be so involved in something. I'd be like, oh my God, this is never going to end. And then it just does, you know, and it kind of like, luckily humans grow up, you know, that's kind of what they do. They kind of get older and they kind of get wise and they learn new things and learn how to do things and eat and swallow and, you know, all this kind of amazing stuff, you know, so it's, um, and that year was incredible to be able to watch those things happen weekly and sometimes daily, you know. Yeah. Mm. Now you said you were you were just couldn't wait to be a dad. Um, was that because you had a great relationship with your dad and you just wanted that to continue? What was your childhood like? Uh, no, I think my childhood was very different. Um, you know, my mum and dad got divorced when I was really young, about three, and um, I didn't really have that kind of thing. You know, that kind of father. And then my mum got remarried, and we didn't really have the greatest relationship. So it was um, it was a little bit messy there, but. I, I always kind of, um, you know, like, uh, I don't know, I used to watch TV programs and I used to kind of see kind of families and all this kind of stuff. And I just really wanted it, you know, I kind of, um, you know, and and don't get me wrong, like I look back at it and, you know, you can kind of play the blame game and play this and, and, you know, and be, you know, um, a victim in any scenario. But really it it just, um, I, I look back at that time and I always kind of knew that when I got the chance, I was going to do it slightly differently, you know, and, um, and, um, and I haven't done it any way like I thought I would, you know, like with kids and stuff, but it was, um, <laughs> but, um, but, you know, being a father was really important to me. And also it was really, you know, but the, one of the biggest things that happened was meeting Emma's family because they are the most perfect idyllic, like family structure like her mum and dad are solid and just amazing and her dad is just like this absolute you know like rock like a proper yeah. hero you know and he's um um you know and the mum is the matriarch in the family by a long way you know so um but it's um but his role is so is so um is so brilliant and he fulfills it so well you know that um that I really kind of like met him and I was like oh wow you're such a great role model you know I'm gonna kind of try and be half of what you are you know it's it's great that you describe him as a, as a role model like that and it's so important people don't realize how important it is um to have good male role models like yeah. around that you can see before meeting emma's dad what other male role models would you say that 
had maybe influenced you in your life? Well, I think my my, my dad definitely. Like, um, like I saw my dad um on a Thursday on the way to school. Like, he'd pick us up. He worked nights, so he pick he worked nights and then pick us up and take us to school. And he would um, and you know, he was a hero to me. Like, I saw him for like probably forty five minutes a week, and it was yeah. the I'd look forward to those 45 minutes so much, you know, and um, yeah. and I'd get every drop of him, you know, that I possibly could, you know, and like, um, and he'd always have a joke for us, you know, and so I'd be able to go in and tell my mates this joke that my dad told me and everyone would laugh and, you know, it was, um, it was always very much that. And we'd listen to madness in the car and stuff. It was kind of like, you know, these memories that I've got of going, stopping at the sweet shop on the way to school, you know, it was just, um, they were big, big memories for me you know and I'm and I idolized him and he taught me a lot you know a lot about manners and about how important that is and you know and about you know like everywhere we went with him he would open the door for people and he kind of you know like these kind of things which are, which I I watched and I was like I'm gonna be like you you know like um and um yes so he was definitely a big male role model for me but I didn't spend that much time with him and as time went on it was less and less and um and uh and I, my my friend, one of my good friends, Ed, his dad, Paul, became a bit of a role model for a few of us kind of tear away kids from our area. Yeah. You know, like um, he was very much a um, a you know we we were we were kind of in an in an area where it was very easy to get into trouble, and it was kind of very much part of our day to day life. And it was, and he was not about that. He was like a guy who'd done well from nothing from our area, and kind of you know he was um, and he was definitely um. He definitely was a major role model on me. You know, we called uh, him dad. We called him Daddy O. You know, so everyone called him that, and he was the best man at my wedding. Wow, mm. that is incredible. Um, something that you just talked about that I think is important for people to hear and people to know. You went through an experience where you didn't see your dad much. You said about forty-five minutes a week. There'll be other dads out there who feel disillusioned, maybe because they're not seeing their children as much because they're in, in a similar kind of situation and they might feel that they're not impacting their children's lives as much. But from the way you just spoke, however short that time is, however um, little they may feel they're still in their, their kids, it's massively important, isn't it? Yeah, and, you know, and I remember um, very vividly from the moment he saw us, it was that, that, that time that we had together once a week was all about us. Like he was just like every moment of his time was on us. Like I think he hated the fact he had to drive us to school because he had to focus on the road. You know, like um, <laughs> and but we'd get there way before school would start, and we'd sit in the car and chat, and it was just like um, it was just this amazing time, you know. And um, and I really, you know, and 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 also like in the summer we'd have one week with him. We'd go um on holiday together, and we'd go to a caravan park or a pontins camp or something like that, and it was um. And I remember these weeks just being so, I, I'd look forward to them for such a long time. And I'd really kind of get to kind of know this man who was kind of like this person I'd see for 45 minutes and idolise. And I'd really kind of get to know what his day was like. You know, it was, um, it was, uh, it was a big thing, you know. And, um, and yeah, I think that's the thing. Like, like, it's quality, isn't it, not quantity, you know. And I think that's, that's something which I find the busier I get, you know, like, because for, for you know, the last kind of 10 years, I've spent quite a lot of it on tour. And um, that that at times became really hard, especially with Ace, our middle child. Like I was away for a lot of that. And, um, yeah. and you know, like in the industry that I'm in, you kind of grow, have to grab opportunities when you can get them, you know, and, it's kind of, um, and I spent a lot of time not doing that as well. So I know how in how kind of how important it is to work, you know, and, um, and, uh, you know, but then, but then it's hard, you know, because my work tends to take me away, you know, and then, um, and like, I've got a job in theatre and I'm going to be going away hopefully in September, you know, and it's like a nine month tour and I'm already dreading that a little bit because it's, um, you know, that's, 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 that, that's a long time to be away. And, um, but, you know, we learned a lot from the early days of that, you know, from me touring, we learned a lot what's, what's okay and what's not, you know, and we were like, right, I can never be away without face-to-face -face time for more than three weeks because it becomes um, it becomes problematic, you know, with the kids. Like, when I'm away for more than three weeks, um, it would be different when I come home. Yeah, totally. Mm. I mean, 
you guys have got incredibly busy schedules, the both of you. So the fact that you have managed to make it work just shows that there must be a, a massive communication level and thought that goes into it, right? Um, yeah, like, I mean, I say that I'm very, very unbusy right now. Um, I, I would do a lot to be busy right now, if I'm honest, mate. But, um, but <laughs> you know, a lot of us in that COVID <laughs> say, exactly. I'm like, gosh, come on, come on, world. Uh, everything I do seems to be in front of some kind of crowd. So I'm, I'm, I'm screwed for a while. But, um, uh, yeah, so it's, um, yeah, it takes, it, it's logistics, isn't it? It's the boring stuff of going through diaries weekly and kind of going, where are you? What are you doing? Well, you know, and, um, and obviously we have help. We have a nanny now who, um, who we didn't have for a while. We didn't have a nanny for for years and years and years. And we kind of, um, we relied on them as parents a lot. We kind of shuffled things around and we made sure that if it was going to be hard, I wouldn't do something or she wouldn't do something to allow the other one to. And, um, you know, and the longer that went on, it just became more stressful and problematic. So I, I think having someone who we now have in our life as a nanny has just been a game changer. It's been so nice. Um, you touched on something that... Uh that sparked something in my mind. And it was when you talk, spoke about your dad and him giving you that full attention. When your dad was doing that, we didn't have mobile phones, I'm assuming. Yeah. Uh, so we didn't have them in the car to look at or for someone to contact you or whatever. So when you're sitting in the car with your dad before school, he can be fully present with you. Nowadays, we have so many distractions. Yeah. We've got mobile phones. Even the kids have got devices these days. How, how do you manage all of that? Do you, do you like do you have times when it's like right no devices team it's it's family time we have no devices from 7 p.m so we have um we have a we have a like an old school london telephone box in our kitchen that is a phone jail you know and we all put our phones in there at 7 p.m every night you know and um and then you know the kids go to bed at 8 8 30 and um and so that's time when we we just spend together you know so it's um that's been really big because otherwise you know, to use the excuse I'm working is a lie because most of the time you're not or most of the time you're doing something which could be put off. There's nothing going to happen between 7 p.m. and 12 really in my job or Emma's job that really relies on that communication, you know, and if it's something that can be postponed, we will, you know. And But but then again, you know, when the kids go to bed, me and Emma might do something quickly. <laughs> You know, so 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 uh, <laughs> yeah, so we uh, we you know get a bit. We quickly come down and start tapping. You know, but it's See, um, I'm I'm thinking I might have to steal your phone jail like situation for my yeah. household because mine are like um, thirteen and eleven now. So we've got the secondary school. So they've just got their mobile phones. They've only yeah. had them. Sienna's had hers for like a year. Well, not even a year. And Rory's had his for about a year and a half. And I'm loving the phone jail situation for the parents as much as for the kids. Well, that's the thing. For us, it's a big thing. It's made a big difference because um, otherwise we can say we're going to sit down and even watch telly together, you know, but one of us is on our phone, you know, while we're watching telly, you know, or, you know, it's just not a good look. I just think it's kind of spreading a bad message and it's kind of going, you can't have it, but we can, you know, which is yeah. like, which is, you know, not a cool message, you know, and, um, you know, and you're right, like Isabel's got a phone now and she, um, you know, we, we kind of, we were the last parents to do that and, um, and uh, I think we just eventually felt like we were being <laughs> slightly weird because she was the only one without a phone. We're like, okay, cool, I think we need to do this. You know, but we've got big rules about it. We've got kind of certain... Because I think this is the thing, right, is that with this whole world that we live in, we have no idea what's going on, really. We have absolutely no idea what effect this is having, what, yeah. what we're involved in, you know, like what kids are seeing, you know, what they're not doing you know because of it and all this kind of stuff you know and and social media like i'm i'm we might kind of make we're still getting to used to it as parents so i mean for exactly them, like... exactly man and, and, I, and i'm still affected by it in a weird way you know like i try not to be you know but like um biggest thing i did was stop reading comments like um that's the best thing i ever did you know and now i refuse to read any comments you know on anything which is a big thing because um because like I could get loads of good people want to weigh in on your life. People want to really. weigh in, and it's just like you know what it's. But then if you and then I was like, well, if you put yourself out there, you have got to expect to kind of. And I'm like, wait, well, 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 no, <laughs> no, that's actually not true. I can do whatever I want and take whatever I want from this situation, which is in my control. You know, so um, uh, so I stopped doing that. But um, with the kids, I, I don't want them to be in any. I don't know. 
I don't want them to have to worry about that or worry about what someone says or, you know, so it's um, yet, you know, and then I'm sure we're going to cross that bridge when we come to it. But at the moment, we've kind of made that rule. But it's, um, you know, the device thing is 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 a big thing, isn't it? Like it's so so much bigger than we think. And the distraction from it is huge. You know, for me personally, like um, I have to really watch myself because I'm on it far too much. So what were you like as a child, Matt? I was very bad at school. I kind of didn't, um, I was, um, I was very, uh, um, I don't know. I just used to kind of think I was thick, you know, I kind of like kind of, that's a bad word. I, I, I think that I, wa I wasn't very clever and that was just it, you know? So I was like, yeah. cool, I'm done here. You know, like, um, this isn't going to work for me. So, um, you know, and that just kind of bred this kind of like weird kind of attitude from me about school and the kind of, um, and it, and it, became quite problematic at times I think but um um you know and I was I was you know I always wanted to be out with my friends doing stuff I never wanted to be at home I never wanted to kind of be at school I just wanted to be out and um and uh and away you know and I kind of like um but I you know I also you know was very aware that whatever I was going to do in life wasn't going to be to do with what I was learning at school, you know, and academic based, you know, and um, and so I um, once I found out that I had kind of like a, like um, a, an ability to be able to perform, I really kind of grabbed that and I really ran with it and I found any avenue for it possible, you know, and it was um, and I was involved in everything I possibly could do, you know, when I was a kid, like performing wise, I would have done anything. So from that from that way that you were about school and you, you, you kind of weren't interested in it, how are you now with your kids in school? Well, I'm, I'm quite surprised at them. You know, the uh, thing is that this must, be, um, this must be something to do with us, but, but they're, they're very good. You know, they're very, um, they're very you know, they're like, don't get me wrong, they're not the most hugely academic kids, but they're still very focused and very, you know, and, very, and they have the ability to, to want to learn. You know, which is which yeah. is just I didn't I didn't have. I just kind of switched off, you know. And you know, if you can if I kind of look back on my kind of childhood and I kind of go, Well, look, that was a sign, this was a sign, this is a sign that wasn't picked up on, you know, of certain kind of learning difficulties or things that I had, you know, like um like now my kids are kind of fully like the teachers are so great and everyone's so um supportive. You know, the, the school that we that my kids go to, like my you're, you know our kids go to the same school, right? I know. I heard. I heard. My wife told me. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so yeah. So like, they're really amazing with them. And like, for instance, my eldest is um is not wasn't particularly good at her maths exam. You know, so like um, so they give her like extra support. You know, like it wasn't like she was like dropout level, but they're like, right, cool. Do you want to get better at this? Because if you do, we can help you. She was like, yeah. And so now she's and like miraculously over this year, she's got way better. You know, it's like so if I think. I think it's with anything, isn't it? It's um, it's a, it's a wanting to do it, right? So if you don't want to do it, you can throw the book at them and they won't bother, you know. But if they actually want to, and they're inspired by people to do well, you know, and we and we, you know, we congratulate them when they do well, and we don't necessarily have a go at them when they don't, you know. And it's um, it's about talking to them about what they want from things, you know. I'm like, well, what do you want from this? You know, what are you kind of, you know, do 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 you, do you enjoy it? No. Well, um, you're going to probably have to do this for a while. So what do you want to do? Waste your time or kind of get something from it? You know, it kind of like, so we yeah. kind of talk about things in quite a, quite a logical way, you know. You mentioned um, inspiring your kids. Do you inspire your kids? How do they feel about you being a musician, performer? How were they when they were little? Did they run around singing your songs? What was it like? Um, yeah, they're, they're, they're really stagey. They're really, really stagey kids. <laughs> uh, uh, they're, 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 they've proper got the bug, you know, like, um, and I don't know if I pushed it on them. I don't know. I was trying to think about that. I was like, I was like, did I make these kids like this? You know, but I must have, right? But um, but they're also quite, um, they want to achieve. They want to do, you know, they want to, you know, they're, they're quite competitive but in not a, in not an annoying way. Well, I'm, you know, actually, my my oldest is a little bit annoying with it, but um, <laughs> but uh, but you know, it's like so there's there's a definite want to achieve and a want to kind of do something, um, and they're good at it. They're gifted, you know. I say gifted, like they they, you know, we we always talk about hard work, right? So that's the biggest thing. Like my kids will be so bored to death with it, and like if they talk, yeah. if you talk to them about it, they the first thing they'll say 
is hard work beats talent if talent doesn't work hard. You know, and like I've said that to nice. them since birth, you know, and like, um, and it, for me, that's true because I don't really think I'm exceptionally talented. You know, I've never really, like I've met kids, right? Especially when I was a kid, like I met people and I was like, you are so blown away, yeah. blown away by your talent, but you just don't, and you don't respect it in some way or you don't kind of like you know you don't need it you know so it's um it's a very yeah. different when i was like man to do what you do i had to work for 18 weeks <laughs> you know yeah. to just play that one yeah. thing you know so like um and it's still that way for me it doesn't come naturally to me i have to work really hard at things you know like um um with everything and um but you know i've i've been i've managed to be um, to do well in aspects of my career and my life because of that, you know, because I've gone, right, okay, I'm not very good at this. I need to work my butt off to get good at it, you know, like, or to at least not be, not feel insecure about it, you know? Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, that was a big course. driving force for me as well, you know? So it's, um, you know, but I don't want my kids to feel like that. I'm like, right, you just need to know that you need to work hard because also you're bloody you're talented, you know? So I don't want to yeah. tell them that too much, but like you have got that. So just imagine if you get the work in as well, you could be anything. We are so happy to have Tonka as our sponsor this series. Basic Fun's Tonka collection is packed full of fun vehicles for kids who want to get out and get tough with their toys. So dads, you've got no excuse. Grab that Mighty Steel Classic truck. It's time to head to the sandpit for some tough play. How do your siblings get on and how did you get on with your siblings? Um, well, I got to, I got a brother and a older brother and a younger sister. Me and my older brother got on terribly until we didn't live together. Now we get on great, you know. Okay. But um, and you know, I think brothers fight and they, you know, we really did that, you know. But um, but you know, there was also a respect and a love there. But I think it was um, you know, we did row quite a lot and we did because we were boys. We kind of fought and all that kind of stuff. It was quite you know, a heated kind of testosterone fest in our bedroom sometimes. And it was, um, <laughs> you know, kind of getting to grips with all that. But my little sister was five years younger than me and we kind of worshipped her, you know, we kind of really kind of, um, she was the little, the little kind of angelic kind of thing in our house, you know, so um, she, we, we really respected her and kind of, um, she, she didn't really get in any trouble. But then... Um, Did you see any, any, if any, any of it reflected in your kids now? Do they fight? Do they get on? What's, what's well, the deal? I think they're just really competitive with each other which is something which I've really noticed over the last, this year in lockdown. I've really seen it. I'm like, guys, 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 come on, whoa, whoa. Chill out. Whoa, whoa. Well, chill out, man. You We're know, family like, here. <laughs> yeah. Like, you're not winning anything. I'm not, you're not it's getting... us a, against you're not, the world, not us against each exactly, other. Exactly. <laughs> you're not getting a medal here. You know, like, you know, and it's... Uh, but uh, I, they, they really are competitive with each other, you know, so it's... um. Which is, um, which I suppose is good in some ways for some things. You know, I remember hearing about Michael Jordan. You know, I watched that documentary, which was amazing. Did you watch that? Oh my god, it was so different. incredible. And I remember him talking about his brother, and I was like, wow, I really see that in my kids. You know, so I was like, I don't want to knock that out of them completely. You know, like, you yeah. Know, but I don't want them to be, you know, annoyingly competitive with each other, or, you know, bring the other one down because of it. You know, so it's um, there is a line. You know. Yeah. And I know the line you're talking about. It's that wind up line when they're winding each other up in a room and you're yeah. you're in the room next door and you can hear it happening. Right. Yeah. You're, like, <laughs> you're you're like, hold on, none of this even needs to happen. Can you stop winding each other up, please? Exactly. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> you're so right. You're so right. It just doesn't need to happen. I'm like, why what are you getting from this? You know, some kind of sense of achievement for pissing the other one off. It's like, whoa. <laughs> you know, it's such a weird thing. Exactly. Yeah. Totally. Um, what do you think your parenting style is like? Are you tiger parent? Are you um, chilled out, relaxed parent? Are you spontaneous parent? What would you think your style is? Uh, well, I thought I was kind of the, the, the kind of the stricter one. You know, I kind of thought that I was kind of that guy. But then um, we had this conversation not too long ago and apparently none, that's not the truth. I'm, um, <laughs> I'm the one, you know, it's daddy for fun, mummy for love, mummy, oh, wow. <laughs> you know, uh, yeah. mummy sets the rules and, you know, like that kind of thing. So it's, um, you know, I, um, uh, you know, I've got lines on certain things which I think are important and like um, and certain things which I think are really kind of important to for them to learn um, from, you know, but the, but then... You know, it's funny, isn't it? Because um, I, I just read this book, which was, um, well, I'm actually not quite finished it. It's by a guy called Dr. Gabba Mate, and it's how to hold on to your kids. And it's um, and it's really, um, like, he's incredible, this guy. Like, I've read a few of his books. He's um, he's big in the kind of um, um, 
kind of alcohol and drug rehabilitation kind of world. And he's wrote a, um, a book about um, how to hold on to your kids because like he's seeing that more kids are get to an age where they're just influenced by their peers more than their parents. And he sees that as really dangerous because it's um, because they need, you know, we're losing that kind of parental kind of control in some way. And it's an influence. And I was like, wow, that was my case. Like my friends were everything to me. Like I, I would have done anything to impress them, to keep up with them, to kind of do what they did, you know. And um, and um, so I'm very I'm very aware of that. And kind of so that's something which I kind of um, I have a. Um, in my in my bonnet at the moment you know there's kind of something which I'm kind of um, leaning on a bit but um, I do take this job quite seriously you know so you know it's um, you know it's uh, it's the most important job I've ever been given you know and um, and I really do you know like I don't want to mess it up you know but it's um, and of course I'm going to at times which um, which I have to be a bit kinder to myself about you know like I'm, I'm gonna make mistakes and I'm gonna do the wrong thing but you know, I'm, I, I try to be really careful with my words because, um, you know, like there's certain things that were said to me as a kid that I hold on to, you know, and through kind of, um, you know, I don't want to be like a bit too LA and therapy about it all, but like through therapy with me, I've kind of found out that these things like that I was kind of instilled as a kid don't serve me very well, you know, and these words that were kind of said to me, um, you know, at certain times have stuck around, you know, and kind of like, um, and enforced maybe decisions that I've made, which haven't been very productive to my life, you know, so um, I, um, I don't want to make those mistakes. So I'm very careful with what I say. And, 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 um, and if I do something wrong, I'm very quick to apologize, which I think yeah. is something which I, um, I, I, I try to do as much as I need to, because, um, you know, it's very, very easy as parents go, well, I'm just right and you're wrong, you know, which is, yeah, I think yeah. is, you know, you're wrong all the time, dude. You know, I'm, I mean, for talking to myself, you know, like, I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah. and when I am, I want to be able to own that and go, guys, I'm really sorry about that. I shouldn't have reacted like that. I was, I'm tired. I'm hungry or, you know, whatever it was or what you said affected me, you know, so we're quite open like that. You know, it's, um, it's quite, um, it's been, you know, important, I think, to be honest with them. Something you mentioned just now, made me aware that you're, you're, you, you take care of your well-being. You, take, you, know, you keep an eye on it. You keep an eye on what's going on in your life. We've just gone through a year of the most weird, you know, lockdown, pandemic stuff that's going on. How has that been for your kids? How's that been for the family? I mean, because, you know, families are finding it difficult all over the place. How have you managed to, to stay in a place where, you, where your well-being and your, your family's well-being is good? Um, well, um, I mean, at times we haven't, you know, I think, um, that's the, that's the thing, isn't it? I think this has been, um, you know, this has been strange for everybody, you know, and like, and I haven't dealt with it very well at times, you know, and I think, um, Emma's the same and my kids are the same, you know, but, um, there's an overwhelming, um, place of love, right? So, so whatever happens, it kind of, it's, it's allowed to happen because it's, you know, as long as we address it. You know, as long as we kind of like look at what's happening and we kind of, um, you know, I don't want to stop anyone feeling anything or and, and, you know, and sometimes you have to go through something, you know, like um, towards the end of this last lockdown before the kids went back to school, I could really see it in my in my eldest two. You know, I really felt like they needed to go back to school. They really needed it. And it wasn't from a selfish place for me from not wanting to homeschool anymore because my God, I didn't want to homeschool anymore. But um, <laughs> but um, it was um, it was really from from them and their and their personalities. I could see becoming different, and I could see them. Um, I could see things creeping in, like you know that kind of like lull of energy that kind of like fatigue yeah. kind of thing that was happening and it was happening to me you know like my eating patterns went out the window my training stopped you know all these kind of things happened in the third lockdown and i only really addressed them like about a month ago it's like oh my god like i'm doing things that i've never done in my life like um like training was such a big part of my life and i i i'd stopped that you know because gyms weren't open i just went well that's it you know you know and um and because yeah. of that i ate loads of rubbish and you know felt terrible about myself you know and that was obviously rubbing off on my family you know and um and um and so I had to really check myself about that but I think with them 
you know we could see certain things happening and we, we but we're quite we we really want to talk you know so like, i think it's so important to kind of talk about things and you know sometimes people don't want to and that's fine you know but when when you can grab a moment i think it's so important and to, to kind of open up and and also by me saying you know things are hard or struggling you know i think is kind of a give someone else permission to 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 talk about the way they feel you know and um and i think that's always a good conversation opener with someone you know is 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 what necessarily you're going through you know like um and asking them how they are you know be um not necessarily because you need to but because maybe you want the other person to you know like with my kids i do that you know that's a tactic yeah. i've got you know i mean that's what i'm i'm hoping that the episodes of these podcasts are doing mm. i mean seeing someone like yourself talking about yeah no i struggled in lockdown as well mm. and we i had to realize that um you know i need to get my exercise back on because you know it's affecting me mentally and stuff hopefully someone else sitting there listening to this now is going to be like wow okay i'm not the only one matt's going through it nigel's been through it we're all going through it and yeah. it can take it can take that pressure that weight off because one of the biggest things i think parents do um is that pressure that they put on themselves yeah yeah it's a huge thing that we do to ourselves we we sit there and we we think that we've got to be perfect and we all we all know that none of us can be perfect but we strive so much to be that good parent that sometimes we put extra pressure on ourselves that isn't needed yeah i think you're so right i mean i know i know i do that you know sometimes i really do that and um and i, I can also really i can really affect the energy of the house if i'm not careful you know like um yeah, that's a real, yeah. that's a real thing. But also, so can everybody, every other member of the house. I can feel it. I can feel that happen. You know, if someone's there, I can feel that ripple. You know, so um, you know, that's a good place to address from. You know, like um, and uh, and you know, I try different things to kind of deal with stress and kind of things like that in my life now. But it's um, um, I can really, I can really feel that happen. But also, I hate it when it comes from me because I can feel it happen in the house. I'm like, oh my god, I caused this. You know, like, and I have to kind of open up and and own it and go guys i'm sorry i've been you know this way you know and i feel like um you know this lockdown for me was the hardest like it really kind of hit me you know like i'm i'm i think you know personally i've never been not busy you know like um unless yeah. i wanted to be you know like um but i had no control over this and then um, and for me it was um uh you know i had my diary was suddenly empty and that was a really strange feeling for me, you know, and I kind of felt very, uh, say, emasculated, but um, it felt very strange, you know, and felt like um, I suddenly questioned loads of things about, you know, which I shouldn't have been doing. I should have just been accepting what I cannot change, right? But, um, but, um, but you know, these little thoughts creep into your head, and so you, you overcompensate in other areas, you know. It's, um, it's, it's, very, it's very strange what happens to people, you know. Like, and I've really noticed it with myself. I'm like, wow, I'm behaving textbook insecure, you know, or textbook, you know, um, anxious or, you know, whatever it was, you know, like um, because of um, the inability to do what I thought was my role or my part, you know, um, when really, you know, being there for your family in a time when they need you is the most important thing you can possibly do. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're being there for more than just your family at the moment. Did I hear that um, you and Emma have be recently become vaccine volunteers? Uh, yeah. Yeah. We've been doing that. Um, uh, the online learning for ages. Like it took a really long time. Um, but we joined St. John Ambulance last week. Um, wow. We kind of went. Yeah. So we kind of did like um, a few. We did um, the St. John Ambulance courses online. Then we kind of did the NHS training. And then we went for our last day, which was our kind of face-to-face, -face kind of um, the practical side of learning. So I'm uh, Emma actually learned to properly vaccinate people so that she can, because she did um, an MCA at the hospital she worked in. Um, she had a TV program called um, Delivering Babies. She still does it now. Yeah. She actually got qualified as, a, as an MCA um, uh, for to deliver babies. And um, so she has a qualification. So she's was allowed to kind of go into the training to vaccinate people so she can actually, uh, I think she might be able to vaccinate me, which will be when it comes around, I'm like, wicked, <laughs> you know, but, um, wow. but yes, but, but I don't have any, um, you have to have two A levels or an equivalent to be able to do that. And I, I am um, uh, apparently two. Yeah, but giving back in any way, giving back in any way, shape or form in this, in this time of need is, 
is a great thing. Great. And what, what made you decide to do it? I just felt completely um, uh, helpless, you know, like in the first couple of lockdowns. And I, and I tried to kind of volunteer at kind of food banks was a big thing. I really wanted to help there. And I kind of, and I, and I, I was, we, we kind of um, do certain things with food banks. And, and so I checked on online. I tried to find local ones to kind of volunteer to help, but they were inundated with help. So they didn't need my help. And um, they needed, <laughs> they needed money and kind of all that kind of stuff. But I actually wanted to give up time and kind of, as well as like, I'm doing nothing. Give me something. Put me to work. You know, I'm a doer. You know, I want to go and do yeah. something and physically help, you know. Um, and I couldn't find anything to do. You know, I volunteered for the NHS to give them um, to to um, be a driver to drop medication and stuff like that. But it didn't I didn't go through. And um, I was just like, so I just felt like I couldn't really um, there wasn't a chance for me to help in any way. And um, and then uh, and then this came up and I was like, boom, straight on it. You know, we kind of signed up. And um, I told Emma about it and she was straight away to sign up as well. And then we, um, and yeah, so then we've, we've done it now. So we kind of, um, I think we've got our first shift in the next couple of weeks, you know, so um, we'll be at a vaccination centre near you. Awesome, mate. Now, what have you got coming up? What are you working on at the moment? Um, I've got, um, I, I auditioned for a musical like in the end of last Ooh. year. So, um, and I got that role like early this year. Um, and it was supposed to start in May, but obviously we've had to, push that back a bit so that's starting a bit later in the year so i've just started work on that so i'm going to start um kind of preparing for that role which is amazing i've really wanted to play that i can't say what show it is unfortunately yet no, but no, um fine. but um but once that comes out i'll be fully in, on board with that and then um and you know me and the busted boys are still talking about stuff all the time you know we kind of took a bit of a break in september 2019 and uh you know, we're kind of talking about what will be the next thing that we do and, and all that kind of stuff. So there's, there's there's lots to come. Yeah. And then you've got your own podcast, right? Yeah. Yeah. We do a podcast called When No One's Watching, me and my friend Matt Richardson, um, which I love. You know, it's been a real saving grace during lockdown as such because um, we started it about six weeks before the first lockdown. And um and like uh, it was it was we've been wanting to do it for years. Like it's just it's just a real bit of fun. It's like yeah. we do it in 90 minutes and we chat to someone and they kind of a guest brings along things that they do when no one's watching, their guilty pleasures, the stuff they do that they don't necessarily want to own up to. <laughs> and I mean, mate, we have had everything. Like it is um, it is so funny, the stuff that people are into. And you really learn a lot about someone in a very short period of time. But it yeah. just makes for a really fun conversation and kind of really opens a guest up. And it's just um, it's just a really good easygoing fun laugh it's brilliant i love it i love it so awesome much. awesome i'm gonna check out a few of the apps yeah please do one of the things we ask all of our dad vengers that come on is if you could have one dad superpower what would it be and why <laughs> i think we'll be able to change the tone of my kid's voice <laughs> like oh. um, there is a, there is a certain tone which is intolerable to intolerable to me which um which is this whinging tone which can happen which is <laughs> you know if i could just turn that volume down when that happens <laughs> it would be the most ultimate superpower because um you know like for instance we watched this movie recently called yesterday and it's where like um uh, the kids get their parents always say no to them. So they get one day when the parents have to say yes to everything, to their plans. And so um, we watched this movie, with this movie and they loved it. Oh my God, my wife's just crawled behind me. I thought it was one of your children. I thought yeah. it was one of your kids. She's just crawled. She Emma just is crawled. welcome to say to hello. I didn't No, please. Yeah, hi. 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 I'm how so sorry, Matt, Matt sent me. I'm good, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. Great to see you. We've been talking good. about parenting and how he's a great dad and all of that stuff he's not bad yeah he's all right Do you know what he's amazing and today <laughs> I, I, I was gonna say this right at the very end before i before i sort of sign off but matt today you've really inspired me as a dad oh, it, there's, oh. Something, oh. You've, there's something about your honesty your your willingness to own up to the fact that none of us are perfect and to just roll with that and just show a love for your family that is, I, I can't fault it, it's amazing. 
Oh, that's oh, cute. Mate, You're going to make me mate. cry, and oh. I've got to go and do a Radio 1 interview. So. <laughs> <laughs> you can't. Uh, bye. No. See you soon. Bye. Thank you. See you Sorry later. to interrupt. Oh, I was saying about the yesterday thing. So my kids... um. Uh, my kids watched this movie called Yes Day and they were like, right, okay, so can we have a Yes Day? And I was like, okay, if you don't make that whinging noise for seven days, we will do whatever you want on the eighth day. And they lasted three hours and we started again, two and a half hours, <laughs> they started again. <laughs> so, um, but luckily I've got that superpower because I've got, right, okay, is today the day we're going to go for the Yes Day? They're like, okay. And they don't whinge for like about three and a half hours and they forget and they're like, and I'm like oh, sorry, Yes Day's off. You know? <laughs> Listen, Matt, thank you so much for giving us your time. Thank you, Matt. Uh, and being here. Good luck with everything you're doing. Good luck with the podcast as well. And hopefully we'll see you very, very soon. I'd love that, mate. All the best, man. Hopefully see you at the school gates. Peace. Yeah, see you at the school gates. So there you have it. Another fantastic episode of the Dad Avengers podcast. It was really great to listen to Matt talk about his male role models growing up, about how he and his family deal with their busy schedule. But I think the best thing for me was uh, hearing how he has embraced fatherhood from the beginning. So well done there, Matt. Thank you so much for listening. And if you have time, leave us a review. We'd love to hear what you thought of this episode or of the series as a whole. And don't forget, you can subscribe or follow using your preferred podcast platform to be first to hear the episodes. If you'd like to find out more about Dadvengers, head to dadvengers.com where you can find out more information about our live chats, about our meetups, quizzes, blog posts, and more. This has been the Dadvengers podcast, sponsored by Tonka, because being tough is all about getting out and playing.